Within this video, we're going to go and create a very, very, very simple door. And the idea is that what's going to happen is it'll just open up as soon as we walk up to it. So with it closed, walk up to it and it opens up and I walk away and it stays open. So let's go ahead and build the blueprint that's actually running this. So for this video, I'm going to assume that you already have a door. So go ahead and use that. But let me show you how to build the actual blueprint. So I'll open up the content browser down here and I'm going to stay inside my blueprints. I'm just going to right click, come up here to blueprint class. Now the blueprint class that I'm looking for is just a simple actor, just this first one right here at the top of the list. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to go and name this one BP door auto. This is going to be an automatic door. Now I'll go ahead and just double click and open this up and I'm going to actually drag this down a little bit. And what I want to do is just drag the door that I have already built. Now I'm going to grab the door that's actually inside the starter content. So if you go into starter content, come down into props, you'll find a door. So I can just click and drag this into there and let's go ahead and dock this back up here at the top. So cool. Now I have an actual door that exists inside of my blueprint and I am inside the viewport right up here at the top. So I need to add in a component and that is going to be a box that is going to live around the outside of this so that when the player actually walks up to it, they'll walk into that box and that will set off the code that's gonna open the door. So to do that, we'll go up to add and I'm just gonna type in box and we'll find a box collision. Perfect. Next, I wanna go ahead and write the code for this. So let's go over to our event graph. You can find that tab right here. I'll just click right there. Inside here, I don't need any of these. So I'll just select those and delete them out. From here, we want to set up so that as the player walks into that box, they'll actually be able to open the door. So I'll just select the box over here on the far left. And then over here on the right hand side, I'm just going to scroll down until I find all these little green buttons. And what I'm looking for is the second one. So on component begin overlap. I'll just open this up a little bit so you can see that. So this is the second one here. There we go. Now I'm going to do a quick check to see if it's the player because any actor could walk into this, but we want to make sure that it's just specifically the player. And in my case, it's just going to be a one player game. So I'm going to go ahead and connect from the other actor. So I'll just click and drag off the pin there. I'm going to say cast to third person character. So this is the blueprint that I want to use right here. So this third person character. Excellent. And you'll notice that it connected the execution pin. So that's awesome. So now if anything walks in there, it may not do anything, but if the character walks in there, it'll totally open up. So next I want to go ahead and take the door and I want to set it so that it will actually rotate open. So I need to get a reference to the door. So I'm going to click and drag this SM door into my scene, right? So now I have a reference to it and I want to be able to rotate it. So this little blue pin, I'll just click drag off of there. And when I let go, now I just need to search for set rotation. So set rotation, actually I'm going to set relative rotation, relative rotation. You can find that right here. Excellent. Now, one thing I do want to point out, I'm going to zoom out here just a little bit, is that if I go ahead and overlap and just set the relative rotation, it's just going to snap open. And I actually want it to like open up over time, like, you know, over a timeline. So let's go ahead and add in a timeline. So I'll zoom back in here. So I'm going to right click, search for the word time line, and you'll find it down here at the very bottom. We'll add in a timeline. Now I'm going to give this a name because I believe in naming conventions. So let's go ahead and name this one door anim. Perfect. Now this node is kind of cool because if I double click on it, I can actually get down inside of it. So I'll just double click on it and you'll notice now we have a new tab up here at the top that it is this door animation. Now I need to add in a track. You can add a track right here. So I'll just click here. And what I'm looking for specifically is a float track. I'm going to go ahead and name this one door swing because it's going to be making the door swing open. Now I need to add in at least two keyframes. And the idea behind what we're going to do is we're going to have this animate over about a half a second. So we're going to have one keyframe at zero and then another keyframe at about half a second. Okay. So I can just hold the shift key on the keyboard and left mouse click to add a keyframe. So there's one and then hold shift and left mouse click again to get a second one. Now I want to make sure this is directly on that zero zero spot. So I'll select it and then inside of my time and my value, I want to set both of these ones to zero. So at my time at the very beginning, I want to set that to zero. And then the value for this, I'm also going to set to zero. So perfect. Now the second one's going to be a little bit different. So this one, I'm going to have it set up at the half a second mark. So 0.5 and then my value, I'm going to set to one and you'll see why here in a minute. Now you'll notice that this goes off screen. 
this goes shooting up off the top here. So all I have to do is just click somewhere inside of here and then hit the F key to frame that in. And the other thing that I want to do, because animators will totally want to make this happen, is to give me some kind of an ease in and an ease out. So I'm going to select both of my keys right here. And if I right click on these, I can go ahead and just set these to user. And then I'll get a nice ease in and an ease out. So cool. This is all set up and ready to go. And we can go back to the event graph. Now you'll notice we now have a new spot here that says door swing at the bottom. And we're going to use that to actually set the relative rotation of the object. But we need to do something in between first. And this is why we set it to a zero to one. So let's give ourselves a little bit more space here. And we're going to add in what's called a linear interpolate. So I'm going to click and drag off of our door swing, let go, and type in LERP for lerp. And specifically, I'm looking for the float lerp right here. And I don't want it connected to A. I actually want this one connected to the alpha. So I'm going to hold down the control key on my keyboard and click and drag. And I can just rewire this down here to alpha, like so. So what we're going to do is we're going to set it up so that as the door swings, let's actually go to the viewport here and look at this from above. Okay. Now I'm looking directly down the Z axis and you can tell because of the way the little gizmo is down here in the corner. And what I want this to do is if this is my pivot right here, I want this door to actually swing either 90 degrees this way or 90 degrees this way over a time of 0 0.5. Okay. So we got 90 degrees over one half of a second. So over here inside of our event graph, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the A to zero because that's where it's going to start. And the B, I'm gonna set that to 90 degrees. And the alpha is going to be over one second. That's where this door swing comes from. So hopefully that makes sense. So next, what I wanna go ahead and do is update that relative rotation. So let's take our update from our timeline and I'll just connect this over here. And you'll notice that this return value is a float. Okay, so we've got a float right here, but this one over here is a rotator. So what we need to do is actually break this open so we can get an X, Y, or Z individually as opposed to trying to rotate all three of them. Now you could connect this up and it would do some funny things. Give it a shot, see if you can figure out how to make that happen. So let's get this one out of the way just to make it a little easier. So to break this, I'm going to break the structure of it by right clicking on it and say split structure of the pin. And now we can get at each one of these individually. So let's take the return value from this lerp and drag it into the Z, the yaw, because we want to rotate around that axis. Excellent. So now all we have to do is connect this check up to the animation, like so. So let's make this a little cleaner. Move this over here, right? And I'm going to make it about that big on screen. I'm going to take this, I'm just going to move it down a little bit, right? Okay, cool. So now we can see the entire code down here because we want to check to make sure that it's actually going to fire. So now that we've got the code set up, oh, we actually do one more thing. Let's make this box a little bit easier for the player to walk into. So let's make this large enough so that the player can actually hit it and then actually set it around the door. That, let's make it a little bit larger, just, just for insurance. There we go. Cool. So now that this is all set up, I want to make sure that I'm actually compiling the code and then saving it afterwards. So I'll just hit compile. So cool. Let's go ahead and drag this down. Let's go back into our event graph so we can see that code. Let's just set this about here on screen. And inside of our third person one, we want to go ahead and drag this into the actual world. So we can actually hit the browse button right here. And that will take us to the actual, <laughs> it's going to be tiny down here, of course. Let's go ahead and just drag that door auto and set it right here. There we go. Perfect. So now if we press the play button, I can walk up to this. And as soon as I walk into that box, you will notice that the code will fire down there in the bottom right hand corner. Ta da! And it opens up. Now, one of the things that's also that you should be aware of is that this isn't super efficient because every time I walk into it, it's going to fire. So maybe we we'll want to add one little thing into this. So let's go ahead and just bring this up. And inside of here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, move it over, and I'm going to add in a node right here. And it's called a do once. And this do once, let's just click and drag off of here. Type in do once. This is only going to do this once when this player walks into it because in my case, the door is going to open and it's never going to close again. So I'm not really worried about it. So now it'll check to see if that's the player and then it'll just only do it once. Now you can put this on the other side over here too, if you wanted to, it's totally up to you, but I think that the wires are just a little cleaner here. So it's a total preference. So there we go. We'll do that. Let's drag this down here in the corner. And if we look at this now we'll go ahead and play, walk up to it, it opens and fires. Now this, 
will keep it from firing any farther. And it totally finishes that off. So it's not going to do anything else. So there you have it. A real, really simple way to get a door to open as soon as the player walks up to it.